I'm Rachel Nelson, Director of the Institute of the Arts and Sciences at UC Santa Cruz, and I welcome you to Music for Abolition, the final event in the Visualizing Abolition series for this academic year. Visualizing Abolition has been organized with Gina Dent for UC Santa Cruz, the Cezanne Art Gallery, and the San Jose Museum of Art. It's been a true pleasure to have been joined by scholars, activists, lawyers, poets, artists, and others throughout the year for critical discussions on art, prisons, and abolition. You can find the past event archives and information on related exhibitions at barringfreedom.org. It's also been incredible to work with Gina Dent on this series over the last year and really much longer. I've been thanking our collaborators and accomplices throughout the series. So today I wanna to spend a moment to show my deep gratitude to Gina for all of her care and brilliance. We had originally planned visualizing abolition as a two day conference, but with first the pandemic and then the uprisings over the summer, Gina and I realized we had an opportunity to make a sustained contribution to the urgent and ongoing movement for social transformation and prison abolition that has been at times simmering and at times erupting over these last months. And Gina dove right in to the much expanded and ever growing responsibilities of hosting a year long initiative. As we've heard throughout our discussions, abolition is a collective vision of social relations transformed, a vision rooted not in punishment and retribution, inequality and unfreedom, but instead in mutual care. Working with Gina, I've had the true privilege of seeing within her model of collaboration and generous intellectualism, how these transformative practices are already being lived and fostered. I have learned immeasurably from her what a, a creative and political aesthetic education is and can be, and I'm deeply grateful. I'm also grateful to Gina for the conceptual brilliance leading up to today's event, a panel discussion with the musicians who contributed to Music for Abolition, the program of original music videos, which developed alongside Visualizing Abolition and can also be found at barringfreedom.org. We'll put the link into the chat shortly. One of the pleasures in working with Gina is sharing a commitment to taking seriously what can be learned from art and creative practices. And when Gina and I were talking about what it was gonna be like to take on an extended program on art and abolition, largely without leaving our houses and without much physical proximity to art, Gina had a revelatory idea. She invited Terry Lynn Carrington, the amazing NEA jazz master and three times Grammy award-winning jazz drummer, composer and producer to curate music for abolition. And for those of you who've been tuning in for the events, you know the results have been amazing music videos and original compositions that carry with them the sounds and practices of abolition and freedom. We're so thrilled to have some of the musicians who contributed here today, including Nicole Mitchell, Diane Reeves, Sarah Elizabeth Charles, Nicholas Payton, Lisa Fisher, Cecile McLaurin Salvant, Eric Rivas, Warren Evans, Mamuna Yosef, Camilla Cortini Bello, and Queen Cora Coleman. I'll just add that as this group can attest, Terry also provides a model for collaboration, collectivity and activism that's pretty on point. So I'll welcome Gina and Terry now and ask them to come on screen with all thanks and love. Hi y'all. Hi. I'll turn, hey. I'll turn it over to you, Gina. You didn't tell me it'd be so embarrassing, but thank you. <laughs> uh, Rachel, before you go, I just wanna thank you for this incredible year. And I know you'll be joining us at the end, but I just wanna say it has been quite extraordinary. And so thanks to you for being an amazing collaborator and an and igniter of all of this. See you soon. Welcome, Terry. We've hey, been looking you. forward to this uh, event all year long. Um, who knew what kind of a year we would be going through together? And um, you always find ways to bring music into places that really need it and lift us up through music and through what work, the work you do at Berkeley, especially with the Jazz, uh, Jazz and Gender Justice Institute. And so I, I would love for you to just talk a little bit now about what it means for you to have been a part of this project and how you conceived of what you were doing. Okay, well, thanks for having me. Um, this is you know pretty cool that we got to work together because 
uh, we've been friends for about 20 years. <laughs> it was finally, there was young finally an that? opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was finally an opportunity to work together on something. And that's actually what you said when you called me. And, um, you know, you were extending your community um, to me and asking me to extend it to people I know, friends of mine. Um, that's one thing that I feel like uh, has been pretty consistent with most of the things that I do. I mostly work with people I know and trust. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can imagine, gathering uh, this many musicians, uh, there definitely has to be a certain amount of trust mm -hmm. involved because, um, yeah, we were in the middle of a pandemic and <laughs> we're you know, doing this thing, creating a song, a new piece. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the music uh, is new, pretty much. And um, also creating videos kind of on our own. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people may have actually gotten some help, but I think most of us uh, did it ourselves, which was new for me. Um, I partnered up with Lisa Fisher for the very first one. And that was um, for your talk with Angela, Angela Davis. And um, that was kind of the kickoff. And it was really a lot of fun trying to uh, figure out just what to put in it, uh, writing the, the piece, but also uh, you know, collaborating on that and collaborating on uh, images and footage and things that we wanted to say visually. So uh, I hadn't really done anything like that before, not quite in this way. So that was, was great. Um, but most importantly, it was an opportunity, an invitation to expand. Um, and I know uh, Cecile has a piece uh, called Expanse, which I, I felt really said it all because I knew that that's what I needed to do. And I wanted to uh, invite others to do the same thing. Of course, some of the people have uh, been doing this kind of work uh, surrounding abolition uh, already. I think uh, Sarah, uh, Elizabeth Charles, and um, some more Pender Hughes. Uh, for sure, I know they've been, you know, in the trenches with this kind of work. But I think you know most people um, maybe hadn't been as overt, you know, with with really speaking on this issue, including myself. So um, it's reframed the way I think about things um, because I feel like um, it, it's given me the opportunity to think about the, the music that I create differently now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm able to, and you really pointed this out, I think when we initially talked about it, that sometimes musicians have uh, the tendency to uh, report the present, reflect on the past, um, but not as often really uh, provide something that makes us imagine a different future and you know the potential that uh, we all have potential that lies in the future and how do we really address these things in a way to you know make a doorway or a window into um, something that we haven't experienced yet and uh, I feel like now after uh, I guess it's been eight six eight months uh, since September <laughs> doing this I feel like everything uh, that I'm thinking about musically uh, reflects this reflects this very project, reflects this work. Mm -hmm. So thank you uh, for allowing me that space to expand. And thank you for um, even just trusting me to pull something together. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just had a blast because all these people are so cool. So um, yeah, that's, I'm excited to hear what well, everybody else has to say. Me too. Um, and it seems like a perfect time to bring everybody on. So. Let's have everyone come on camera and we'll do some introductions. Wow, what a beautiful screen. This is awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not lying, these are like some of my favorite people. So I'm just wishing that we were all in one space actually I cracked a joke earlier, you know, about having a cocktail, but I do wish we were able to uh, celebrate all together, um, you know, this, this collaborative experience, this collaborative um, 
the work that we created. Yes, I do too. But I want to welcome everyone. And we want to let you all, this is Zoom. Zoom's a little awkward for introductions. Um, we're going to ask each of you to just, um, you know, say a few words about um, why you were so generous with your time and your creativity and wanted to join with this project. And um, I'll let Terry call on, on each of you. Okay, well, um, maybe I'll even do it in the order that the videos were created. That might seem the easiest. Uh, so that means I will start with Lisa Fisher because her and I did the first one together. <laughs> um, I'm uh, just so happy to be here amongst all of you and just so grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this. Um, I was losing my mind and trying to figure out um, how to maneuver through the madness, all of the levels of madness. And so when Terry uh, suggested uh, doing this, at first I felt um, that I couldn't do it because I didn't know enough. I didn't, I'd never done anything like this before. And uh, after she talked me off the edge of the edge of the edge, <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'll try. And to be able to imagine and to visualize past your reality was the gift for me. And um, I'm just so grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, speaking of imagine, uh, the name of the uh, piece was Can You Imagine by Cora Coleman, Queen Cora Coleman, and Lemon Youssef, AKA Mimi Fresh. So, um, Cora, why don't you speak first and then Lemon? Thank you, Terry Lynn. Hey, everybody. Um, I understand that space, Lisa. I think that a lot of times, um, there's so many things in our journey that is um, that keeps people in bondage. And so a lot of times freedom is kind of daunting even when we're not incarcerated. So it is challenging to process life um, beyond the chains of whatever job or relationships or you know different things. Uh, so when Terry Lynn called, first of all, she's is definitely my shero in, in drumming and has always been. So anything she's gonna ask me to do, I was gonna say yes. So um, it's a pleasure to do, uh, to contribute to this, to this movement really in reframing how we see life and how we see ourselves and the people around us. And um, Mumu Fresh is one of my best, best friends. And so we're always, walking daily and doing affirmations. And, you know, we did a lot of that through the pandemic, just every day getting up and exercising and affirming the day and affirming the future. And there's a lot that we're experiencing now that we um, have manifested because we took the time to do that during the year of clarity. So it was a pleasure to be a part of creating a new narrative um, and to talk about what it is to imagine life um, without bondage and to imagine life as if bondage never existed, which is the beginning lyric of the song. So thank you again. It's a pleasure to be here and share this time and space with you all. Absolutely. And, and that's also, I have to note that Cora did all the editing and put that piece together so amazingly. She's super multifaceted, multi-talented. So I was like, here, Cora, here's a video. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was excited about the opportunity to reimagine something. It sometimes is, um, it is a challenge to see things differently than you've always seen them, but there's no way we can create a new future if we can't use our imaginations to think about what could it be like if we didn't keep perpetuating the same cycle. Like if we decided that we could do something new, it was possible to have a new reality. If all of us collectively started to think that way, the future wouldn't have a choice but to be the way that we thought it out. Um, and also in, in the piece, you know, I wrote about my father who spent a lot of my childhood incarcerated and a lot of his childhood incarcerated and what that, that cycle that it creates in the mind, you know, where it became hard for him to see himself not incarcerated. 
you know. Um, and he's he's finally home now, and it's it's still like it's a it's a part of him. It's a part of him. Bondage is a part, a deeply entrenched part of his experience, and he's trying to see life differently now. But it is um, it is a struggle, and so. I don't know if you've ever loved somebody who's done time, you do that time with them. So there's a part of you that's also incarcerated with them while they're there, you know? So, um, yeah, it was a, definitely a, a piece that was helpful for me. It was very emotional writing the piece, you know? Um, yeah, so, but thank you for, for the opportunity to express that and to lend my voice to abolition. It's really important to me, yeah. Thank you. And Core killed the beat too. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. One of my favorites. So yeah, I'm happy to just see her in action. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's go, who's next? Nicholas Payton, Freedom. Freedom is no fear. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, um, and Terry is one of my best, greatest friends. So. Uh, when presented with the opportunity to uh, collaborate with her, especially in the midst of all the uncertainty that was going on. And uh, through Terry, uh, have become friends with Gina and Angela as well. So um, yeah, this project hit very close to home to me because you know music, uh, the whole reason that I got into the music was being attracted to uh, how free the people were, all the artists and the musicians growing up in New Orleans and such a deep, deeply entrenched musical community. Um, uh, that, that aspect of the music has, has always been at the forefront for me. Um, so I use this video as a means of uh, using the voice of the great Nina Simone and some of her words about freedom and expressing that and also made that tie to African dance and also use that to tie into New Orleans and Congo Square, which is one of the only places in America where the enslaved uh, Africans were given a space uh, to practice their drumming and singing and rituals. And through that energy uh, and through that music and through that ritual, uh, these Africans were able to reconnect uh, to who they were in their lineages, which col colonialism sought to destroy. Through the those Africans, they were able to rebuild those connections. And uh, this music uh, we have today is, I think, has been perhaps the first civil rights movement. It was the first crafting uh, we saw of um, a group of people who were viewed as less than human now had to be put on the world stage up next to your Picassos and Beethovens and so forth. Um, so yeah, so it's just been a pleasure to work on this. and. Uh, happy to be amongst such an illustrious group of uh, artists. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, next would be Cecile Lawrence Alvarez. Hey, um, I'll just yeah, say that uh, typically uh, every time, actually I can say this without a doubt, any time Terry Lynn Carrington has asked me to do anything. I have said yes, when, um, because it's always been uh, some of the deepest stuff I've been involved in. And so, and I always learn a lot. So uh, it was really a no brainer for me to be a part of this. Um, my last ever concert I've ever done was at Gina's house. So to add to the no brainer element of it, um, and actually, I want to go back to something that Gina mentioned earlier, which is this idea of thinking about the future. Uh, I am somebody who is steeped and fascinated with and just a nerd for the history of, um, of African-American culture, of, of the African diaspora. I... Uh, I tend to really dig into that history to understand what's going on today. And as you know, that kind of, with that kind of nerdiness and with my inherent pessimism, 
and fatalistic tendencies. Envisioning the future is something that I never do that fills me with a great deal of anxiety. The future of even just my life, but of the world, it's really scary. And so to approach that in a way that was positive, that was optimistic, that was envisioning more freedom and more agency for people was um, actually incredible and has changed the way that uh, I'm going about the work that I do now. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this because uh, there is a way <laughs> to not envision the future as the apocalyptic thing that, that I've been uh, <laughs> dealing with. So thank you. Thank you, Cecile. Um, I think next would be Nicole Mitchell. Hey, everyone. It's such an honor to be with all of you and Terry. And this has been a real transformational experience for me um, working on this project because I, I try to imagine, you know, what are the steps that need to be taken? And I felt really compelled um, to talk with, you know, some veterans, some people that have really had this experience of being behind bars for years and then coming out into society and the kind of challenges they face. And so um, I wanted to have their voices to be heard in my piece. And and I feel that this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of learning about this and, and looking at all the work that I know Angela Davis has done for decades on this. Um, and Gina to see this project is truly uh, like a something that's so needed, like for us to be able to imagine um, into the future because if we don't, then the culture isn't going to change. And that's really what I learned from this whole situation is just how the popular culture um, is, is definitely holding us back in order to like um, change some of these things. And I want to keep working on it. And so I'm just really really moved by the whole thing and by all the work that all of you all are doing and all of the different ways that we can use imagination to couple that with what some of the experiences are and also have a shift in the culture you know make a real shift in the culture so um I'm doing I'm doing more research. I'm trying to learn more and I definitely see myself like this is something that I'm not going to be able to let go of. So thank you for bringing me into this. Uh, I'm just learning a lot and very it very challenged. You know, it's it's really hard because I realize that we're all in some level imprisoned ourselves like no matter what our situation is and how do we actually shift this whole punitive way of doing things like on every scale how do we actually what does that look like and how do we get there so thank you thank you nicole sarah elizabeth charles hey terry hey everybody um it's an honor to be here. Thank you for asking me to be a part of this, Terry. Really, um, I appreciate everything that everybody shared so far. And um, you know, this uh, when Terry first asked me to be a part of this, I think it was following a conversation that 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 she and I had about work that I've been doing in, in correctional environments for for a long time now. I've been working in correctional environments as a teaching artist for a little over eight years. Um, 
in New York City and, um, and you know, mostly Sing, Sing Sing Correctional Facility, Rikers Island, and also at Lee Correctional Facility in South Carolina. And as, you know, it's really interesting because a lot of what's coming up right now is this idea of humanization in relationship to visualizing abolition and what my role potentially is as a teaching artist and as an artist, um, or not even my role, but what my contribution can potentially be, which is something that I've asked myself a lot over the past eight years, um, especially as, as a songwriter. Um, you know, it's been really interesting and uh, very problematic <laughs> um, and fascinating to me to hear like different questions that I've gotten over the past eight years in relationship to the work. Um, that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of, um, you know, questions like, why are you, why are you doing this kind of work? These people don't deserve, uh, don't deserve this kind of programming. Um, they did something wrong and they, you know, they should be where they are. You know, these ideas that, um, that are really embedded and ingrained in our society in really deep ways around punishment um, and judgment and this sort of like patriarchal cultural hegemony that we're like all existing in, <laughs> in relationship to, to what's normal when someone does something wrong is just uh, something that uh, I'll, say, I'll say I've been fortunate enough to really be faced with in a very clear way um, during my time um, doing, this, doing this work and being a part of these communities. Um, and and any time I get a chance to talk about it, I, I feel like it's, it's important whether it be through music or through an event like this. Um, I feel like it's important to just um, to speak to my experience and to share just a little bit about the fact that you know being a part of these communities because that's what I consider them to be these creative communities um, that happen to be in these uh, uh, in these types of facilities um, has yielded me meeting some of like the most the bravest most creative most kind um most collaborative i could go on and on human beings that i've ever come across in my entire life um and you know during this time of covid and this pandemic we haven't been able to go um to go in person to teach workshops and we've been corresponding uh via snail mail <laughs> this entire time um and it's been um it's been a lot and it's been, I mean, we, it's been hard, but it's also been like kind of amazing to be able to exchange in that way on a regular basis and an occasional phone call, you know, um, and just sort of see the resilience um, and the commitment to, to learning and creativity and growth. You know, um, it's, I just feel like sharing, sharing a little, sharing that felt like what was coming up right now. So I just wanted to, um, to, sh to share mostly that in relationship to my contribution to, to this particular um, initiative, which I, again, I feel really fortunate to be a part of this as well and is really important. I just feel like the humanization aspect in relationship to this forgotten population of people is really important um, because we, you know, we can talk about it on a larger scale, but until, you know, I really appreciate Mumu what you shared <laughs> um, earlier, you know, when we talk about these, these individuals as human beings and we're able to um, to see that that's something that I've come to believe, which is that given the right or wrong set of circumstances, any any of us are capable of anything and that any of us could be in that same situ exact same situation. Um, and that the problem is is the system and the way that we're we approach it. So um, yeah, I I'm grateful to be able to express that through my music and to be a part of a small part of these communities um, and to be a part of this, this event. So thanks for having me. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, next would be a collaboration between Oren Evans and Eric Rivas. Uh, Oren, why don't you go first and Eric. Uh, I'll, I'll just say honestly, um, kind of similar to some of the things that were said earlier, uh, when Terry Lynn calls you, she never calls you for something that, that isn't important and um, good for your soul. Uh, and, and as a, a father of two African-American men, 28 and 23, 
doing this project was was special to me dealing with anxiety and freedom and uh trying to rewrite or or not rewrite trying to to imagine what it could be if I didn't have to have those uncomfortable conversations that I had to have with my sons. So this this was an honor and a pleasure to be a part of and then also to uh, collaborate with with my brother Eric Rivas. So I'm happy to be here and I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing all the videos in this format outside of uh seeing them on my own. Yeah I to kind of reiterate what everyone has said, you know, Terry calls and it's like, wow, okay, yeah, what what did we do? Um, so when when the the chance came about to do it and and, and to work with Warren, uh, we were thinking about certain things, and we've been in several situations where the idea of of um, freedom and, and what that represents in terms of the music has, has come about in various ways. And there's a correlation between that and the, you know, the idea of abolitionism. And um, sometimes, you know, it's like the deconstructing of something actually, you know, erases the veneer of the obvious and gets to the, the true essence of what is happening or what, what, you know, not overt political things, but, you know, sentiments that have been going on for years and years. And so we, we took something as a source material and improvised on it. And um, it's, it's actually proved to be very relevant, you know, 40 or 50 years after it was originally done. So once again, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Gina. It's a pleasure to be here and with you all. Thank you, folks. Um, so I think this is the last but not least category of another uh, collaboration between Camilla Cortina Bello and Diane Reeves. So um, why don't you go first, Camilla, and we'll let Diane close us out. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I am so, I'm beyond words of being here. Um, I'm a student, uh, Terry Lynn is, is my mentor, we've been working together for over a year in Berkeley. And when she called me, it was like, wow, um, this little Cuba who have been in America only for three years is invited to talk about, like, you know, express myself through music to something as meaningful, deep and personal as abolition and prisons and things like that. I was like kind of overwhelmed. Uh, not to mention when she mentioned that Dan Reeve is going to sing it. Wow, that was like, this is, I can't believe this is happening. But I remember one of the talks uh, I was part of with Angela Davis when she say, if we concentrate on education, love, family values, we don't even need prisons anymore. And I tried to reflect that love and that, that strength in the composition. Um, it was a honor. It's a still, I'm, I'm very happy with the collaboration. I am very happy to be involved with something like this as a, as a creative being because we don't get the opportunity as Berkeley students, like we, we create music and music and music, but when you have the opportunity to merge the music with a meaningful cause and, and make sure your voice is raised in that context and people start associating you with those kind of causes, it felt very meaningful to me. And, and yes, thank you so much for the invitation. I am so happy to be part of it. Well, it was my pleasure and joy to work with uh, Camila because, I mean, she wrote this piece that was absolutely stunning. It was full of emotion. It was full of all kinds of things that took me on a journey. And it's called Unspoken Voices. And, you know, and, and once again, like everybody says, when Terry calls, it's going to be a journey. So I'm always like ready to go on that journey because I know it's going to be good and I'm going to find out some other things about myself. And given that, you know, this time that we had because of, of, of COVID uh, was here, you know, I went through all kinds of emotions, all kinds of things. But the one thing that I realized is, you know, people started, you know, I would hear people talking and seeing t-shirts and things that said things like, um, you know, I'm my ancestor's wildest dream. And when I think about what uh, Cecile was saying about 
because I wasn't trying to think about the future being very, very bright. I realized, you know, my goodness, if I'm my ancestors' wildest dream and I know what my ancestors went through, what wild dream, what what a reimagining of, you know, the future, you know, am I doing or am I thinking about? And so this whole project of, of abolition and and reimagining not only your life, but how you would want to see things move forward has been something that will probably never, well, I know will never, you know, leave my life because um, it is, it gives you a kind of freedom to be able to think about these kinds of things. And so um, I'm just very, very grateful to be a part of this project, being opened up. I've never done videos where I put stuff on and that, you know, putting images and all that kind of stuff that was new um, and raw, but this was a very sacred and um, uh, good space to be in. So, you know, that whatever people would be able to see the idea but more than anything, um, this experience has just been so enlightening and it's given me the energy and uh, uh, at, to, to see another way to move forward. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, thank you, you all. Know, I also want to um, just uh, mention the people that aren't here uh, that weren't yeah. able to make it uh, just because their videos will be represented in this kind of collage of videos that we'll see. Um, that would be uh, Chris Davis, Val Genti, and Lily Finnegan. They collaborate, collaborated on one. Um, Samora and Elena Penderhues collaborated on one. Um, Malcolm Jamal Warner did one. Christian Scott did one. Jason Moran collaborated with Kyle Abraham for one. And Jose James did one. So just wow. give some props. Yeah awesome lineup and of course we've been getting comments all year about the music and i know you all are looking forward to this part so the videos were so incredible and we have so many and they're so long we can't show every minute of every video right now they're all available for viewing on the web page but um we've had um some clips made and so we're going to show the reel in thirds so right now i want to um ask that we um, get ready for the first ones.
Wow. So you all have said some, already said some amazing things and you can see why people were so inspired by these offerings at the end of every, every, every occasion. Um, and some of you have already shared the way you were connected already to issues of abolition. And um, it's been amazing for me to hear that this project was also uplifting for all of you or some of you who mentioned that. I know for me, this has been um, an amazing way to move through this very difficult year. It made it feel like a completely different thing than I imagined. And um, these videos are part of the reason why. So I just love to invite you um, to say more about each other's work, about what you, what you see and hear, um, about what we're shifting sonically, visually, consciously. Um, I'd like to invite Cecile, uh, but she may have to leave early, but I'd like to invite Cecile, even though we haven't seen her video yet, it's in the next batch, um, in case she's not here, maybe you could speak a little bit about your, your uh, creation of uh, You Ought to Be Ashamed and Expanse and how they relate. Well, I, I want to say first that um, all these videos are so beautiful, and I love how, like, eclectic it is and how it's just so many different uh, approaches and points of view to this same problematic and um, it sounds great too. <laughs> um, I'll just say really quickly, um, I initially just, you know, when, when Terry Lynn uh, contacted me about this, I immediately thought of this Bessie Smith song that I love to sing a cappella, which is called You Ought to Be Ashamed, which is um, supposed to be a love song, but for the last few years, I've been thinking it more <laughs> as a, uh, a song about um, our relationship to our country <laughs> and uh, the shame that our country carries. And, um, and I sent it to Terry Lynn and she said, well, well, great, but, you know, try to imagine the future too. And I said, oh gosh, okay. And I sat with that for a little bit. <laughs> and um, I had been doing a bunch of animation, just really rinky dink like animation on my iPad for the last few months. Um, I'm working on a, on a movie, so I'm just trying to get my chops up um, or you know, not even chops. I'm just trying to understand how it works, how, how drawings can move. And, um, and so I sat with this idea of envisioning the future and the, idea, the, 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 the word expanse um, popped into my head, um, just that idea of a vastness, an expanse. And so I sat at the piano and um, wrote this song uh, that's in the video and um, recorded it with my iPhone and then animated the song and sort of tacked that on to um, that Bessie Smith song as uh, you know, the, the more optimistic, sweeter side of, of the thing, you know, stepping away from that shame and seeing what happens if, when we do step away from, from that shame and from that condemnation. Um, and so it was a really, really fun experience, but I have to say that, um, just seeing all all of everyone's videos has been such a such a honor and a pleasure. Um, so thank you all for all your wonderful work. Thank you. So, Gina, you have any um, or anybody? I, I guess can jump in if you. Um, I know we saw like the first third, of, you know, parts of the first. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, and I, I can say uh, for what we created, uh, part of you know what I was thinking about was um, I kept thinking about uh, I forget his name now, but we had an initial conversation with some of the artists and speakers that were involved with um, the symposium. And there was a, a gentleman that was incarcerated in solitary confinement for a very long time, and they. Uh, this, the, uh, this artist, I guess, asked him to uh, design or, or imagine like a, a house. So I was just kept thinking about if you've been in solitary confinement for 
years, I think about that kind of isolation and mm -hmm. what kind of house would you even think about? You know, that was just, that really stuck with me. I mean, everything stuck with me. There were so many amazing people um, as a part of this uh, symposium. And mm -hmm. unfortunately I didn't see all of them because uh, I teach, uh, now the semester's over, but I taught at the same exact time in my classes at the same exact time every Tuesday. So I, I miss you know, everything pretty much, but um, you know, was able to go back and see some of it. Um, but I was thinking you know, along those lines um, when I approached Lisa about doing ours and you know, thinking about isolation and uh, mental illness and, and um, grieving. And then there was you know, also uh, somebody that had a picture in what the, the initial material Gina sent. Somebody had a picture, I think they had gotten married uh, this guy and his wife, they got married. And I think they got married, but it was just showing love. And then you start thinking about that. And I know other people I have, you know, a family member, um, he got married in prison. Um, he finally was released after um, about 40 years or so. And um, still, you know, it's with his wife. So I started thinking about that too. Um, you know, things that I just hadn't really thought as deeply about. I don't know about you, Lisa, anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I was uh, really just trying to uh, follow your beautiful uh, lead on this and just the, the beauty of collaboration, you know, is also a blueprint for, I think, how we can all solve the issues at hand if we're willing to collaborate. And, um, you know, my view of it was really more of all the dark stuff, all the dark stuff. It's like, you know, knowing people who've been in, you know, hearing the stories and reading them. And, you know, because we're all empaths in a way, um, we feel others, other people's pain and you feel their tears and when you hear a story, you, you feel it, you know, you're, you're in it. And, you know, I was just spiraling down and down and down into this thing. And it was just so beautiful when you were saying something along the lines of, you know, that's, that's, you know, it's good to, you know, realize that part of it, but let's also bring in some light. And then when you went out and you captured the sun and you captured the fence, with the greenery behind it. You know, you see all this greenery behind it, but you're, you're trapped, you know, with this metal, you know, and just all these, the, the imagery and the, uh, the things that, um, those uh, images that also um, support the energy of the music and the energy of the melodies and um, just the overall uh, arc of the piece was just uh, what I needed. So thank you. <laughs> I just want to say um, from just the films that we just saw, what really moved me was the, the vulnerability and the resilience. Like the sp like freedom is part of that. I see it as a certain resilience to be able to to bounce back and to still find joy in spite of being, you know, all these crushing um, circumstances, you know, that we're dealing with. And I really felt that was really strong in all the pieces that you all just played just now. And especially like just seeing the movement, you know, and the resilience of the rhythms and, and um, it was just, that's where the joy comes in, you know, and I really felt that from from the work, you know. Uh, <laughs> I have to say, shout out to to Queen Cora and <laughs> Mumu Fresh. That was super fresh. <laughs> that was super dope. I felt all the I felt all the pieces, but that that really got me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, I'm I'm. I feel like I want to be here with you all all night. And then I realized we, we're going to run out of time. So I want to show the
the second um, batch of clips right now so we can get to everything. So if we're ready. How do we how do we imagine justice? Imagine justice. How do we imagine justice? And imagine justice and imagine justice. How do we imagine justice? In a very different context. Justice is not based on vengeance. You can almost choke on the strange, seductive smoke evoked by lies the mirror hides. The sleight of hand fans the flames of deception, singeing the truth in the cleverest of fashion and then sold as baked goods, apple pie sweet, just enough to pamper a pauper's palate. And we feast fast because we've got that human hunger, soul starved, spirit searching to be fed anything that feels good. And truth be told, Lies feel good, right? Like a cherry tree myth. And America's lies, seasoned with cunning deceit and sauteed with just enough arrogance to be addictive, make us feel good about ourselves as we lead the world of the free. You be sorry. You. Outside, we have to reimagine inside and the way that we feel about ourselves, the way that we see ourselves, because it was extremely hard to to get work. And when we did get work, uh, we'll get the job, and then eventually HR would say, well, the criminal background came back, so you, you can't do this job. Um, it was extremely hard to get housing with, uh, with a 720 credit score, uh, but you can't get the, uh, the apartment because you're you, you feeling you have some of the most intelligent people that I know are behind me.
I just thought the program is, it's like so perfect. You know, I, I just want to keep going on this journey. I could sit up and watch this constantly because I, I love all the voices, all the freedom, all the clarity, all the realness, all of that. I just love how this is put together. Great, great. I just want to throw out there uh, somebody we didn't uh, acknowledge that helped us put that uh, our segment together, Matthew Parrish, um, also a great bassist from Philly, but he's he's started doing um, uh, video production and and along with Eric and I, 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 I wanted to acknowledge him, a great job of putting that together. I'm really happy to be a part of all of this. This is incredible. Can can, can we make the clips longer? I mean, it's like, it's too late now. But it's like, I want to see more of it. It's like, it seems like it's like, it gets you right there. It's like, oh, 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 you get into this world. And it's like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's beautiful though. Beautiful, everybody. Thank you. They all deserve to be seen in their entirety, but we wouldn't have had you all here as well. So we will we will definitely um, talk to you about how we can continue to share this and, and allow people to see um, how beautifully it turned out. Because of course, you know, I mean, we know Terry's magic, but we had no idea really what you all would produce together, right? How you would, how you would, you know, become a collectivity, how you would help us to think through um, the work. And one thing that was so inspiring was the way that each of you with your projects brought something else that got picked up by other people when we were speaking and other people who were writing in. And so all of this was the kind of layering and crossing and sharing and collaboration that um, as has been already pointed out today is really the road to abolition, right? How we're gonna all meet each other and see each other and um, as, as you can already see in the videos that Black Feminist Foundation was there in so many ways and um, it was inspiring to see that as well. Um, and that feeling that, that we have from so many of our ancestors, um, all of us really building on 
um, that that legacy and you all really digging in and showing us that strength uh, and producing this beauty. I have to say that my my now, I don't know, I think it's almost three decades of, of working on abolition stuff. I um, it's it's different for me now because I talk about this all the time that I don't always see only the darkness. I don't always see the only the things that are ugly, but I'm reminded when people are brought into this work that that's how it can appear at first. And so you all have really allowed us to demonstrate that once you're involved in this, it becomes the community that is sustaining you. It becomes a way of seeing the world. It becomes the way I organize my life. And it is no longer just all of the horrible statistics and things that we know and all of the relationships that are broken, but it's also the things that we're building. So I wanna thank you for, for, for truly allowing people to understand that in a deeper way. Yeah, and um, thank you, Gina, for you know giving us the opportunity. Um, also, I just see it all as a collection and I'm hoping that we can put all of these together um, and that there's somebody, I'm saying it out loud uh, on this Zoom in case there's somebody listening out there that wants to support this uh, as a collection of work. And um, I don't know how, but I see all kinds of things that I don't want to see on Netflix and Hulu and all these places. So I, I would love to see you know, something as expansive as this um, shown to a wide audience. Just putting that out there. Terry, I wanted to echo that because I think that's so important. Um, it's like the through lines amongst the work um, is really, uh, are really striking to me. Like one of the pieces um, that was shared, the, a line from it was, we have to um, reimagine the inside before we reimagine the outside. Um, and the piece that I shared, Blind Emotions, is all about inherent bias and acknowledgement of that within ourselves. And like, it's, it's, um, it's just kind of remarkable to me sometimes that what, what I don't know, the, uh, the sort of like natural through lines that can be drawn between creative people um, without us even needing to communicate or work together in any capacity. And also I see everybody on the screen and I see the power in community. <laughs> and I see, you know, Gina, you mentioned black feminism. It's like, okay, how, what, where is the agency here? Where is the power in the group and the collective and the collaboration potentially here? Um, and the power in this collection of material is is immense, especially in my in my opinion, especially in and in your opinion, I guess too, too Terry, and especially in relationship to this topic that is still so provocative in our society. You know, there we we all have platforms in our own ways, and um, there just seems to be a lot of collective uh, agency and power that can be harnessed here. I definitely want to just say this. We will not let Zoom steal our joy. She'll come back. <laughs> okay. So I know you want to go to the I do. Uh, set and then we'll have you know a few more comments to close out. Um, Cora, we lost you, but you're back. You want to say what you wanted to say? We missed it. I can wait until after the segment if that's okay, if that's better. Sure. Why don't we do that? Which so we can make sure everyone can see all of them.
Bravo. <laughs> Bravo is right. Incredible. Yes. That was great. I forgot to mention, uh, yeah, the last video was uh, social science. Uh, and uh, we were scurrying to write a new song. So now we have a new song for our next record. <laughs> So and hopefully other people found a way to, you know, find a way to um, use this opportunity to, you know, use this work to further it, you know, out in what we're doing um, in our regular career lives. So. Yeah, Terry, I want to call on Cora again since Cora got cut off, but I, can you just introduce your band so um, so uh, folks yeah. will know yeah. who else was, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Aaron Parks on keyboards, Matthew Stevens on guitar. Um, Morgan Garrett on bass and he's a multi instrumentalist. Um, Debo Ray as uh, vocalist and um, Casa Overall turntables and rap. And um, yeah, that piece was written by myself and Morgan Garrett. It's amazing. Thank you all. Cora. Cora. I'm so super excited. I'm not gonna even act, act like I'm not. Um, this is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. This is very, very powerful and uh, very inspiring. And I just have to be um, a fan a little bit because of Lisa Fisher and Diane Reeves. I'm, it's, it's an honor to share this platform with you because I have been a fan for a while. And it's just amazing to see you all in your work. And I want you to know that I appreciate you. Um, I always say life is rhythm and rhythm is patterns. It's a delicate blend of upbeats and downbeats interwoven with sound and silence. And um, what this movement is, is, is incredible. It's, it's a new rhythm of thought that is a template for people to follow. It's, it's a melody that people will be able to sing and lyrics that they'll be able to, to remember that gives them another narrative and another portal um, for hope. And I think that's incredible. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of this. And um, in terms of platforms, Terry Lynn, I am, and for everyone, I am producing an international Royal Music and Art Festival, July 3rd and June, July 4th in Houston. And I have seven pavilions. It's a 32 acre ranch, but I have seven pavilions and one of the pavilions is a film pavilion. So I would love to begin at least being an outlet here. I'm in Houston um, to display this work, these works. Um, this is, it really is incredible. I'm just excited. So I just wanted to share that. And however else we can expand that, I'm, I'm happy to support that. More people need to hear and see and feel. I mean, I feel, I feel incredible. So thank you again for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you. That's amazing. Yes, we'll get to the editing this into one long piece. And yeah, yeah. definitely. That would be great. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's Anybody else have some thoughts as we come toward the end? I'll, I'll just share some. Just, like I got to slide out. Oh, no, no, no. So you want to talk? <laughs> no, I just want to say uh, it was incredible. It's an honor to be amongst so much greatness, so many legends just using their, their gift. Um, I mean, really letting God use them. It was just so many moments where I had goosebumps and just like, what? What are you doing? How? So just, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to witness and to be amongst the greats. So thank you so much, Terry, for inviting me and letting me participate. Um, I can't wa wait to go back and watch all of them on repeat over and over. So thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. I was just going to echo the same thing. I just, I think everyone's so amazing and so unique and the openness, the spiritual openness to just go ahead and cross that <laughs> uncomfortable stuff was just so beautiful. And um, just 
everyone is just so amazing. I just love you all. I love what you are and I love what you gave and I love what you do. And Gina, thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. All I can do is echo that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to hugging you all in person and just uh, and embracing and, and celebrating because this this was amazing. This this fed my soul. And I appreciate uh, you asking me to be a part of it, uh, Revis and I, to be a part of it. I really appreciate it. And I th thank you. Like Oren said, it fed my spirit, my mind, my body, everything. And it just, I mean, this is all the things that you need to keep moving forward. Thank you, Terry. And thank you, Gina, for inviting me. And it was just wonderful to see everybody. And like Oren said, there's big hugs in the future because I'm a hugger if you don't mind. But um, this, was, this was incredible. Thank you. Terry, do you want to say one more thing before I invite our oh. folks back? Um, just, I mean, my, the, I'm the one that, that really wants to thank all of you um, because you just answered. I mean, you know, I have the, the good fortune of when I call, you know, people, I, I guess I don't really even think about it so much, but nobody said no. You know, there wasn't anybody that I called that said no. So, um, I feel incredibly honored that, um, that, that that was the case in this situation and um, that this is just, it's the right group of people. Um, and I don't always know what guides me with trying to put things and put people together, but um, I just thought that this was gonna work and it did. And, and, and as um, Nicole, uh, what was it Nicole or Sarah, I'm sorry. One of you said, <laughs> maybe it was both of you, but um, just how it, it there were so many overlaps and it came, uh, nobody talked to each other, but you can really feel it all as one, um, one effort uh, and it worked together. So that's just, you know, really powerful, uh, a powerful testament to, to our artistry, our shared artistry, our collective uh, work. And um, so I just want to thank everybody uh, deeply for, for all of all that you put into this and for showing up tonight. Yeah. I mean, on this day when we're thinking of Andrew Brown Jr.'s family um, and when we're still in the pandemic, um, I just wanna once again say thank you to all of you um, for bringing us through and um, it's really extraordinary. Um, of course, it was because of Terry Lynn that you all accepted this invitation, but I will say that um, with this project, uh, we invited many people to participate and not one person turned us down, not one artist, not one speaker, not one academic. Um, everybody has been on board. And for me, knowing what it was like to speak about abolition decades ago and realize that People really couldn't hear it. They weren't ready to hear it. And realizing where we are now and realizing all the work that people have done, including many of you all along the way, it's um, wonderful to be at a new plateau. Uh, we're not there yet. We haven't, we haven't gotten everybody free, but we are going to make it happen. And you all are part of the reason. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for continuing to share this work. And we'll make sure that more and more people benefit from this for a long time. So as we close, I want to invite Rachel Nelson back on, my co-conspirator, amazing collaborator, um, person who shares my brain now after all this work together. It's been a beautiful, beautiful invitation to have accepted. Um, Rachel spoke to me some years ago when this was going to be a very, very different project. Um, her uh, exhibition that she co-curated with Alexandra Moore closed at the San Jose Museum of Art uh, just recently. And uh, Rachel endured through um, COVID and cancellations and all kinds of other things and always has met this project with the joy that it deserves. 
So I want to thank you all for being here and for sharing. And thank you, Rachel, for initiating all of this and bringing us together. Oops, wait, you're muted. <laughs> I, have to, I have to end on being muted and talking to the muted camera just as we have all the entire time. But I was going to say that Gina and I always, always wanted to end with this because we knew that this is the gathering of love and potential that you can feel in this space with all of you and all that you've made was the way to end what has been a truly amazing um, last months of thinking about abolition with so many amazing people. And we wanted to also call in all of the people in the background. So we wanted everybody to turn on their cameras, which nobody ever does. So we can see and say thank you to all the people that we've worked with, N not even all of, just some of the people that we've worked with over the last year to make this, this happen. So Alexandra Moore, wonderful, my wonderful co-curator who I've been working with for just ever, for years and years and years to think about this. Uh, Jennifer Gonzalez, the wonderful IAS co-director who has been just ceaseless in her support. Louise Leong, who's a genius and has been doing coordinating with exhibitions and tons of stuff. Chloe Murr, uh, without whom I swear that Gina and I would have done nothing except for sit on Zoom talking to each other. <laughs> Kristen Palma, same thing. She is the events, good, uh, she's the events everything at UC Santa Cruz and has made this totally smooth and easy. Zarin, who's the newest member of the IAS team, who was an undergraduate intern this year and is going to be coming on as a fellow for next year and staying with us because she's graduating. Congratulations. So there's a bazillion more people, but I thank all of you, all the musicians, all the artists, everyone in the background. This has been a phenomenal experience. Got anything else, Gina? No, I mean, um... It's hard to see this ending, but it's just a new beginning. That's right. we'll, we're all community now and we'll we'll keep working together. And there's so many so plans in the plans for the future. So <laughs> yes, many, many plans we're hatching. And um, I, I think the best way for us to close is to allow the videos to just play. So um, for those of you who are in the audience and want to stay on, um, we will um, play all of them. And um, thanks to you all. Thanks to all the audience members who've been coming, some of you every week. Um, and it's been um, wonderful to have the support and to feel the connection. Bye. Bye. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
But how do we? But how do we imagine justice? Imagine justice. But how do we? And imagine justice. And imagine justice. And imagine justice. But how do we imagine justice? In a very different context. Justice that's not based on vengeance. You can almost choke on the strange, seductive smoke evoked by lies the mirror hides. The sleight of hand fans the flames of deception, singeing the truth in the cleverest of fashion and then sold as baked goods, apple pie sweet, just enough to pamper a pauper's palate. And we feast fast because we've got that human hunger soul starved, spirit searching to be fed anything that feels good. And truth be told, lies feel good, right? Like a cherry tree myth. And America's lies, seasoned with cunning deceit and sauteed with just enough arrogance to be addictive, make us feel good about ourselves as we lead the world. You be sorry, you just wait and see, just you wait and see, what a treat a dog, the way
what we're basically going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about political prisons and we're going to be talking about what the pigs are doing to the families all around the country. We're going to specifically be talking about what the pigs are doing to the Black Panther Party right here in Chicago, Illinois. And also we're going to have to talk about what are we going to have to do about the repression that they put on the Black Panther Party in order to get that repression off the Black Panther Party. Yesterday I saw your face 
It was my own brother's son. Father, we need you now, and I'm so afraid. I miss you now. It's wise and yes, mine gone away. Where is the love? 